Are you considering investing in a design management platform? If so, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the second part of our video series on design management tools and how they can be used in your interior design business. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at Programmer, one of the newer players in the market. If you've missed our previous video on business management software, don't worry, we'll leave a link in the description below for you to catch up on. In that video, I covered the main functionalities that most of these programs have in common and how they are used in an interior design business. Programmer has most of these functionalities, except for a CRM and a client portal, which may be in the works. One of the things that drew me to Programmer was its sleek and minimal design, but I must admit that I've encountered some limitations with the platform, which I'll discuss further in this video. As I mentioned earlier, it can be challenging for one program to excel at various tasks. I don't use Programmer for invoicing, for task management, for time tracking or image management because it just doesn't perform these functions as well as other programs. Now, you may be asking, what do you use Programmer for? I hate spreadsheets, so I use Programmer for my schedules and to generate requests for quotes and it does this very well and it's got me off Excel, which is always a win. But saying all of that, another key aspect to consider is information management, where you store it and your ability to use and manipulate it. While most programs allow you to upload information into their system, retrieving that data in a usable format such as a CSV file can be challenging. Switching to another platform or using the data for other purposes, even something as simple as a holiday email list can be difficult. You need to own and control your information so that if, for example, a platform ends, you're not left with a lot of data you have no access to. Now, let's get into how I use Programmer in my business. I'll be completely transparent about the platform's strengths and weaknesses, and so you can make a decision about whether or not it is the right fit for your business. So without further ado, let's jump into Programmer and see what it has to offer. So here we are in the user interface of Programmer and it is very minimal. So, so minimal that one of my clients who's quite elderly found it very difficult to use because they couldn't run the buttons and they're not quite as tech savvy as maybe someone who was younger. But otherwise, I would say that the UI is extremely pleasant to use. They just use a very simple palette of black, white, and a pale gray. And it makes the cards that you could create, you could make them really pop and make them look very attractive. Sometimes some of the buttons, for example, the placement of this button here, I find very confusing. I'm using a 4K screen, so maybe on a laptop, it would be closer to my attention. But I guess because I'm on a 4K screen, and I'm looking at a test project, where where I haven't actually populated it with a whole lot of data, then this seems very far away. So other than that, it is quite attractive. The other buttons are quite simple and you can see here, they're very minimal. So as a task list, you can use the to-do list and the studio work in progress. The, I think it would be quite difficult to do really structured task management to set projects to break up projects into much smaller pieces to put in your standard operating procedures this would all have to be done somewhere else this isn't the platform for it this is strictly a task management system which has simple tasks that you just tick off but you can assign tasks to people you could look at a variety of projects you can do some basic sorting and you can see you're pretty limited to the amount of detail that you have and it will require you to add in attachments and images and so on and then have to open them up in some other task. In terms of task management, I wouldn't use this. I wouldn't find this particularly useful at all. And here you can see you can section off your invoices and there's a few notes that you can put in. You can't put in images and so on, which is so important in interior design projects to be able to show somebody rather than write a detailed explanation of the task that you need to be done. So you are able to search products from programmers library as well. They have a trade portal. So you are able to search products and actually quickly populate them. So that's great, that's good fun. And you do get introduced to a lot of brands that you may not know exist. 
In terms of time tracking, again, not as rich as Harvest. You can export to Excel and then you can actually add in hours and minutes, but they don't use decimal points. So for example, I would always count my time in units of 0.25 and 0.25. 50, so meaning that half an hour is 0.5 and 15 minutes is 0.25. And that's how I would populate it in Harvest and then add it all up in order to build the client. So in this way, you can just add some basic notes in a time tracker like Harvest to not only build the time, but also build any expenses that they've occurred. But you can actually add this time tracking to an invoice, which is also very helpful if you want to streamline that process. But again, the information is not particularly rich. I'm not sure whether I would use this because you actually have to manually add in a time entry, which requires you to actually watch it on your phone and on some other device and then add it in as a time entry. It's just an extra step that takes and more time. You can just add the pins or the, the images in here and move them around. But again, it's quite difficult to search. So you'd actually have to just scroll through all your images. I'm not sure how useful that would be. I would find that I just don't use it. Oh, it's much easier for you to do that in some other platform rather than keep it here. You can't sort it, you can't filter it. So if your image library becomes really large, you are potentially going to be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So that would be a problem. The address book, again, one of the big problems that I find with these sorts of platforms is who controls the information. So for example, let's say I want to download these contacts over the years. And as you can see, I don't use to store my addresses or my contacts, mainly because you only store contacts here that were very specifically to do with your projects and not other people. So you wouldn't be storing your social media managers contacts in here. And that means that you're looking in a number of places for the same information. And that would be quite difficult. The other thing that I would comment about is that again, your fields that you can actually populate are limited and you can add a few tags, you can add attachments. It will do the job, but possibly not very well. And you can actually filter them, but I guess you'd have to tag it to filter. So you'd have to remember as you're putting it in to be tagging and making sure that all your contacts really are going into that in the right places. The invoice is actually very, very clean. And I did a couple of test invoices and you can see here, they're very minimal. You can actually brand these invoices. So you can go into the settings and brand it a little bit more than I've done here, but it's fairly generic. And one of the problems again, that I find and having run a design store for many years, people really like to see a picture. Sometimes clients have no idea what something's called, particularly if they didn't do the selection themselves, they wouldn't know who designed this. So if I wrote, for example, Roku Maru design consigned, and they would have no idea what that meant. And some clients wouldn't even know what a console as a word. And they might know what a set of drawers is, but some clients wouldn't even know what a console was to a chest of drawers. They wouldn't know the difference. So how they're supposed to tell from this invoice, what that actual product is. And the leads to is your client actually having to call you up or email you and ask you questions, which then you actually have to explain. Whereas if you did have an image here, usually they can work it out themselves. The next part that I wanted to look at is procurement. And you can see this is actually this I think is one of the nicest things about Programmer in that you can actually track your projects. So your procurement for particular projects. So you can see here, I can add in some photos and you can add multiple photos. You can add internal notes. You also want to point out is the inability to change units. You should be able to change your units and you should be able to change your currency. If you were a designer in Australia ordering something from overseas, then you possibly would want to enter into your accounts, the price that you actually paid and then charge your client that way. And at sometimes orders, quotes, and then when the client orders, there might be a time lag of up to a few months and the cost that you put in in, in Australian dollars might not actually reflect the actual real cost that you pay. And that will obviously then have an impact in your profitability and your numbers aren't quite right and your books don't balance. So there's a bit of a knock on effect there. And the last one, which is new, is a purchase order. And I actually haven't used this yet, but let's choose our test project and we can choose our base material. And we've got, I don't know whether we've actually got, let me just see if I've got something here. So I don't know why that hasn't turned up. Let me just try another 
project. Let me just try one here and I'm just going to choose a material and see if there's any. Nope, that didn't happen too. So let's just go into that test project. We'll go in here and we'll set it up. So we've got the test project here. And let me just say here, we do have, I do actually have some projects. So I had Low & Co interiors and you can see here, we can get a quote from Low & Co. So all of these will go into a, an invoice, which then will be able to populate the quote. And once you do that, I guess you should be able to go into the purchase order. I haven't read this step because this is actually has obviously just been made live in the last day or so. Because let's say I do want to go here, I should hit new purchase order and then be able to find the test project, then choose the schedule. Then the supplier should actually turn up, but it doesn't, so that's a little bit of a problem. So I'm sure that's a slight glitch. As I said, I haven't actually seen this before, so it must be brand new. As you can see, you can actually run a project here if you would like. If you had a large project, I think you'd probably get quite tired of it. And finally, the last point that I wanted to make is downloading information. You can upload information, for example, to your contacts and to your address book, but you don't seem to be able to download it. Now, if you were thinking of leaving programmer or something happened that you had to move to a new system, I'm sure that they would, if you ask them, they could probably give you a CSV file, but it's very much in the back end. And you do get that feeling that you're not really in control of your information, which I think is extremely important. And the last thing I did want to show you was this trade portal. And the last comment I would like to say about the trade portal, it's nice. You can see some products that I haven't seen before or that I have seen, but have never gone to their showrooms. The only problem which I found is if you add some products to your portal, you are invariably going to be contacted by the supplier. Now, I guess this is part of their business model. Maybe gets paid to have goods on their portal. I'm not quite sure. And it's a way of having leads. I don't mind receiving an email, but I invariably just delete them because my philosophy is if I wanted to get a quote, I would ask for it. And so there's nothing really that's going to entice me to actually contact the supplier through that portal and ask questions the particular products. Again, it's different and you could work in a different way. So all in all, would I recommend if you have a small interior design business where your workflows are not too complex, where you don't have the ability to create rich information, such as being able to actually link quite detailed products and where you need measurements and details and you want to keep your PDFs and all of that, then this could actually work quite well. However, as you can see, this ability to not control information is something really that I think is quite important. I do think you should be able to upload and download information from your portal as you will into something like a CSV file so that you do control all your information. Now, at so, this point of the video, you might be wondering, should I even invest in a business system? And the answer is, categorically, yes. However, as I've demonstrated in this video, this is a big decision that will affect how you run your business now and in the future. My advice is to take your time with the decision and not assume that one app will do it all and be the answer to all your problems. But a system, any system, no matter how imperfect, is better than nothing. If you are interested in tech and apps, check out my video in Notions. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you do like these videos, please write. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.